Shalom, shalom, kulam. We're here today to continue uh, on in our series about the uses for the letters of the alphabet as various prefixes and suffixes. Today we're going to discuss the letter nun. First we'll practice the handwriting for the letter nun. You remember that the letter nun has two forms when it's at the beginning of the word or in the middle of the word. Uh, it has a, it's a full size letter, but it's a little bit narrow. It just uh, sits right on the line. And the nun suffix starts at the regular place on the top, but it goes down below the line. And this is used whenever it's at the end of the letter, the nun suffix. The letter nun has two kind of similar uses as a prefix. One of them is in the imperfect tense, similar to what we would consider the future tense for the first person plural. We will do something, and you will see that nun prefixed on to the, uh, the verb root. Uh, the other use is a passive use, and so let's go back to our binyanim chart and talk about what passive means. This is the chart of the seven binyanim in Hebrew, and today we're going to be talking about the nifal. Remember that the passive reflects the fact that the subject of the sentence receives the action of the verb rather than does the action of the verb. So, for example, if I say the book was written by me, that is a passive sentence. The book does not do any action. The book receives the action. In Hebrew, in the nifal, both the participle tense and the perfect tense begin with an additional letter, nun. So because these two uses are very similar in the way that they look, we're going to look at examples of the passive and of the imperfect uh, first person plural. We will do something side by side and see uh, if we can discern any differences. Let's look at some examples. Devarim Vav Pasuk Esrim Bechamesh, Deuteronomy 6.25 Utztaka Tehiyelanu, Ki Nishmor Laasot, Et Kol HaMitzvah Hazot, Lefne Yehovah Eloheinu, Kaasher Tzivanu. Hosea Yudbet Pasuk Abba Esre, Hosea 12.14 Uv navi ha'ele Yehovah et Yisrael mi Mitzrayim. Uv navi nishmar. In this first example uh, from Deuteronomy, we are looking at the root shamar, shin, mem, resh. And it means to guard or to keep. And in the first example, nishmar, it means because we are keeping, we are guarding to do all the, these commandments. So this is the imperfect, we will do them, we will keep and guard the commandments. In the corresponding Nephal uh, scripture, which is from Hosea, we see nishmar, just a slight change in the, in the verb. And this verse is uh, saying, by the prophets, Yahweh brought the uh, nation of Israel out of Mitzrayim and by the prophets they are kept. He is kept. That is the nation of Israel, Nishmar, is guarded. It's guarded and kept by the prophets. So that's a passive use as opposed to a, an imperfect use. Bereshit Lamed Zion Pasuk Esrim Genesis 37:20. Va'ata lechu v'nahargehu v'neshlichehu ba'achad haborot va'amarnu chayara a achalatu v'nire ma yihiyu chalamotav. Mlachim Aleph Perek Vav Pasuk Shmona Esrei. First Kings 6:18. Ve'erez el habayit pnima. Miklaat Pekain Ufture Tsitsim Hakol Erez in Evan Nira. 
The second set of examples is based on the verb root uh, resh olive hay, which means to see. And the first example comes out of the story of Genesis, uh, of Joseph, of them throwing Joseph down into the well. And uh, the brothers cook up this idea, oh, well, we'll just say that a wild animal has eaten him. And then near it, we will see what will become of his dreams. So this is the imperfect use, the group of brothers, we will see. In the corresponding verse from 1 Kings, it's talking about building the temple. And it talks about the materials that are used in the temple. And then it says, Ein even near a. There is no stone, no rock is seen. It's a passive use. The rock is not seeing anything. The point is that the people don't see the rock. The rock is not seen. So that's a corresponding passive use. And you can see very slight vowel markings that show us the difference between these two uses. Vayikra yud dalet pasuk shloshim v'chamesh. Leviticus 14, verse 35. Uva asher lo habayit v'higid la kohen lemor kenega nira li babayit. Bereshit lamet he pasuk harishon. Genesis 35, 1. Vayomer Elohim el Yaakov kum ale vet el v'shev sham v'ase sham mizbeach la el Anire alecha u varchecha mipne esav achicha. This root, ra'ah, is also used in Hebrew in a passive sense that means to appear to. In other words, it was seen by others. Um, I think that in English we think of appearing as being an active verb. But in Hebrew, it really appears as a passive verb. And we have these two examples. The one is from Leviticus, where the man, uh, it's in the rules of leprosy, the man finds some kind of spot, or is translated in King James, a plague in his house. And he, so he goes to the Kohen and he says, uh, it looks like, it seems like, uh, it appears near it. It is showing up, this uh, nega, this uh, plague in my house. In the second example from Genesis, God is talking to Jacob. He says, I want you to go back to that place and build an altar there. The place where uh, God appeared to you. It's the, the place of the God who appeared to you. So it's ha near e. It's a participle verb. It's used as, the, uh, the, as a noun, the one who is appearing. So we see it though, a participle, but it's a nifal participle, the one who appears. So again, the idea of appearing is passive. It means that it is seen by others. And that's the import of, uh, of near e, a nifal form of the verb to see, ro e. Yehoshua bet pasuk achad Joshua 2.11 Vanishma vayimas levavenu v'lo kama od ruach ve'ish mipnechem ki Yehova Elohechem hu Elohim b'shemayim mi'al v'al ha'aretz mitachat. Shir Hashirim bet pasuk shtei Song of Songs, two, verse twelve. Hanitzanim niru ba'aretz et hazamir higia. Kol Hator Nishma Ba'artsenu. One more set of uh, words using a verb that you know, Shema Shin Mem Ayin. And in the first set is uh, actually it's got that reversing vav in it. So we see with our eyes and we will hear in an active future tense, but we would translate it and, and we heard because of that reversing vav. 
In the second example, it talks about the voice of the turtle dove. It's not a turtle, it's a turtle dove. Is heard in the land. So the voice is not doing anything. The voice is, of course, making a noise, but the voice isn't hearing anything. We hear the voice, and so the voice is heard. It's a passive use. Devarim Dalet, Pasuk Achadesre, Deuteronomy 4.11. Batikravun, Vataamdun, Tachetahar, Vahahar Boer Baesh. Adlev Hashemayim, Choshech Anan Ba'arafel. Vayikra Yudchet Pasuk Shesh, Leviticus 18.6. Ish Ish El Kol Sha'er Besaro, Lo Tikravu, Legalot Irva, Ani Yehova. Yehoshua Gimel, Pasuk Shmone, Joshua 3.8. Vaata titsave et a kohanim, nos e aron habrit, le mor. Kevo achem ad kitse me hayarden, vayarden ta amodu. The nun safit is used uh, kind of as a little extra emphasis in verbs that are. Uh, second person plural imperfects, usually they would end in just the u, the vav with the u, but there's an extra nun added. Some people, uh, researchers, believe that it's an indicator of an old case kind of a form or some kind of um, marking to show some meaning that, that we don't use anymore. Uh, it's called the paragogic noon, if that helps you at all, um, but I doubt that it will. <laughs> but we're going to see some examples. So in the first, uh, the first verse there from Deuteronomy, we see two verbs, tikrivun and ta'amdun, from karav, karav to draw near to, to draw near to, and so you drew near, and from amad uh, to stand and you stood. They're both, they're imperfect verbs, but because of the vav, the tense switches. And so uh, those nuns are just there for some kind of accent or some kind of special emphasis, perhaps, that uh, had a grammatical use in times past, but we, we've lost that sense. And so just to compare those, we can see these two verbs in um, in different verses where they appear without the nun and basically that they have the same meaning. The first example is from the uh, sexual purity laws in Leviticus where it says you are not to draw near. So it's the same idea of drawing near, no nun. It doesn't really make any difference in the actual meaning of the verb. The second example is from Joshua talking about the waters of the Jordan will stand, and, uh, the, 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 the waters of the Jordan will separate, and he's telling the priest, you will stand. Ta'am do, no nun, it has no other uh, different meaning than it had in the verse in Deuteronomy with the nun. So that's just kind of a lost marker. It doesn't change the meaning at all. Well, I hope this has been somewhat helpful to you, and next time we'll go on to another letter. Uh, we're more than halfway done. In the meantime, Tasimata'inayim al-Hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.